Hello everybody, it's Uncle Matt and I'm here to read you another bedtime story. And tonight's bedtime story takes place in a place that I work at. It's called Curious George Goes to the Hospital by Margaret and H.A. Ray. This story was copyright in 1966 and uh, kind of uh, renewed in 1994. Are you ready? Here we go. All right, Curious George goes to the hospital. This is George. He lived with his friend, the man with the yellow hat. He was a good little monkey, but he was always curious. Today, George was curious about the big box on the man's desk. What could be in it? George could not resist. He simply had to open it. Hmm. It was full of funny, funny little pieces, all sorts of shapes and all sorts of colors. George took one out. It looked like a piece of candy. Maybe it was candy. Maybe he could eat it. George put the piece in his mouth, and before he knew it, he had swallowed it. A while later, the man with the yellow hat came home. Why, George, he said, I see you have already opened the box with the jigsaw puzzle. It was supposed to be a surprise for you. Hmm. Well, let's go to work on it. Finally, the puzzle was finished. Well, almost finished. One piece was missing. The man looked for it everywhere, but he could not find it. That's strange, he said. It's a brand new puzzle. Well, it cannot be helped. Maybe we'll find it in the morning. Let's go to bed now, George. The next morning, George did not feel well. He had a tummy ache and did not want to eat his breakfast. Wow. The man was worried. He went to the telephone and called Dr. Baker. I'll be over as soon as I can, said the doctor. First, Dr. Baker looked down George's throat and felt his tummy. Then he looked out, oh, then he took out his stethoscope and listened. I'm not sure what's wrong, he said. You'd better take George to the hospital and have an x-ray. I'll call them and let them know you're coming. Don't worry, George, said the man when they were driving to the hospital. You have been there before, when you broke your leg. Remember how nice the doctors and nurses were? George held his big rubber ball tight as they walked up the hospital steps. A nurse took them down a long hallway to a room where she gave George something to drink that looked white and tasted sweet. It is called barium, the nurse explained. It helps the doctor find out what is wrong with you, George. In the next room stood a big table, and the doctor was just putting on a heavy apron. Then he gave the man one just like it. George was curious. Would he get one too? No, he did not. You get, a, you get on the table, George, the doctor said. I'm going to take some x-ray pictures of your insides. He pushed a button, and there was a funny noise. There, now you may get up, and we will have the x-rays developed right away. Now, let's see. There is something that there that should not be, said the doctor when they looked at the x-rays. Why, that looks like, I think that must be the piece that was missing in our jigsaw puzzle yesterday, said the man. Well, 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 said the doctor. At least we know now what is wrong with our little patient. I'll tell Dr. Baker right away. George will have to stay at the hospital for a few days. They'll put a tube down his throat to get the piece out. It's only a small operation. I'll call a nurse and have you take and, and have her take you to admitting. 
Many people were waiting outside the office. George had to wait too. Look, Betsy, the woman next to him said to her little girl, there is curious George. Betsy looked up for a moment, but she did not even smile. Betsy had never been to a hospital before. She was scared. Finally, it was George's turn. A pretty young nurse took him to the next room. My, how many rooms and how many nurses there were. One nurse wrote down a lot of things about George, his name and his address and what was wrong with him. Another nurse put a bracelet about around his wrist. It, it has your name on it, George, she said, so that everybody knows who you are. Then the pretty young nurse came back. My name is Carol, she said. I'm going to take you to your room now. We call it the children's ward and put you to bed. There will be lots of children to keep you company. And so it was. There were a lot of children in the room. Some were up and around. Others were in their beds with a doctor or a nurse looking after them. Dave was having a blood transfusion. Steve had his leg bandaged and was sitting in a go-kart. Betsy was in bed looking sad. George got to the bed. Oh, George got the bed next to Betsy. George was glad when he was in his bed at last. His tummy was hurting again. The man sat with him for a while. Now I'll have to leave you, George, he finally said. I'll be back first thing in the morning before they take you to the operating room. Nurse Carol will tuck you in when it's time to sleep. Then he left. And George just sat there and cried. As he had promised, the man was back early next morning. The nurses were keeping George very busy. One nurse was taking his temperature. One was taking his blood pressure. One was giving him a pill to make you sleepy, George, she said, and one was getting ready to give him a shot. It's going to hurt, George, she said, but only for a moment. She took his arm and George let out a scream. But the needle hasn't even touched you yet, said the nurse, laughing. There, now it's done. That wasn't so bad, was it? No, it really was not, and anyway, it was over now. By the time the attendant came with the stretcher, I like to call them porters. Ah, to wheel him to the operating room, George was getting sleepy. He tried hard to stay awake. He was curious to see what would happen next. He could see a big table with a bright lamp over it and doctors and nurses all around. They had caps on their heads and masks over their faces. Only their eyes were showing. One of the doctors winked at George and patted his head. It was Dr. Baker, who had been to the house when it was all, when it all started. He looked funny with his mask on and then George was fast asleep. When George woke up, he did not know what had happened. He did not even know where he was. Then he saw Nurse Carol. It's all done, George, she said. They got the piece out. In a day or two, you'll be running around again. The man had brought him a picture book. But George felt sick and dizzy. His throat was hurting, too. He was not even curious about the new book. He closed his eyes again. Well, let him sleep, said Nurse Carol. The more he sleeps, the better. The next morning, George felt better. He even ate a dish of ice cream. Dr. Baker came to see him, and the man, of course, came too. Betsy was watching him from time to time. She seemed a little less sad, but she was still, but she still did not smile. Steve wheeled his go-kart over to George's bed. Tomorrow I can get up and try to walk, he said. Boy, can I hardly wait. I'll take you to the playroom now, 
George, Nurse Carol said the next morning, and in the afternoon your friend will come and take you home. The playroom was full of children. A lady was showing Betsy how to use finger paint. There were all sorts of things to play with, even a puppet theater, and that was just the thing for George. He had four hands so he could handle four puppets at the same time. George gave a red, oh, George gave a real puppet show with a dragon and a clown and a bear and a policeman. The children laughed and shouted and even Betsy, for the first time, smiled a little. There was a TV set in the playroom and also a record player. George was curious. If he climbed on the record player and turned the switch, would it go round and around like a real merry-go-round? And you know what? It did. It started slowly, then it went faster and faster, and whoopee! George had lost his balance and was sailing through the air. Luckily, George landed on a soft cushion. The children cheered, and Betsy smiled again. George was so funny. But then the play lady, oh, the play lady picked up George. That's enough for now, she said. You'd better take a nap before lunch. We have a big day ahead of us. The mayor is coming to visit the hospital. Yes, and later on, you'll be going home, George. When George woke up, Steve was just taking his first steps. A nurse was helping him, and the children were watching. The go-kart was standing there empty. George was curious. He looked at it, then he climbed into it. Then he grabbed the wheels and then, while nobody was looking, he wheeled the go-kart right out of the room. George could make the go-kart go very fast. This was fun. Down the hall he went. By now the nurse had noticed that he was gone and came running after him. George, George, she shouted. Uh-oh, uh, looks like a ramp. Ah, but George was too excited to listen. He wheeled around the corner and down the ramp to the floor below. When some men were busy pushing lunch carts, and a lot of doctors and nurses were showing the mayor around. George tried to stop, but it was too late. Wham! The go-kart landed right in the middle of everything. Lunch carts tumbled. Spinach and scrambled eggs and strawberry jam were all over the floor. People fell over each other, and George was thrown out of the go-kart and landed right in the mayor's arms. <clears throat> wow. What a mess it was. You broke all my dishes, someone cried. He ruined the go-kart, complained another. What will the mayor think of it, whispered someone else, and so it went. Suddenly, everybody looked up and listened. From above came happy laughter, and there stood Betsy, laughing. Yeah. Wow. Laughing and, and, and laughing and laughing. Then the children joined in. Then the mayor started laughing, and, and you know, finally everybody just laughed and laughed. Everybody, that is, except George. Betsy came running down the ramp, threw her arms around George, and kissed him. Don't be sad, George, she said. The whole thing was so funny. I never laughed so much in my life. I'm so glad you were in the hospital with me. Now, the director of the hospital spoke. I am sorry this happened, Mr. Mayor, he said, but I think we'll just clean up the mess and be done with it. George, he went on, you've made a terrible mess, but you also made our sad little Betsy happy again, and that is more than any of us have done. And now I see your friend has just come to take you home. So goodbye, George, and take care of yourself. The children crowded around the windows, waving goodbye, when George and the man with the yellow hat were finally leaving the hospital. 
As the car was turning into the driveway, Nurse Carol came running after them. Here's a little package with something that belongs to you, George, she called. But don't open it before you are home. Oh, I'm sure George is really curious about what was in the little parcel in the, bo in the box there. George was curious. Well, would you not be? The moment he reached home, he ripped the paper off, tore open the box, and there was the piece of the puzzle that had caused all this trouble. How nice of the doctor to save it for us, said the man with the yellow hat, and now we can finish the puzzle. The end. Wow. That George he gets in a lot of trouble sometimes. He's so curious. Well, there is a letter here about hospitals in this story. I'll read a little bit here. Here's some tips from Boston Children's Hospital. Before you go to the hospital, choose a quiet time to talk about the upcoming hospitalization. Reassure your child that the hospitalization... No. The end. Well, that's all the time we have for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.